This video is sponsored by Goat Guns, makers of authentic diecast miniature gun models. Diecast models of aircraft and tanks have been around forever, but when I came across Goat Guns' new range of gun models, I was impressed by the idea and the quality of the models. At 1 to 3 scale, each model has detailed working moving parts. When you select and receive your Goat Gun model, you assemble the kit yourself, the parts snap and screw together. Each goat gun kit comes with three dummy rounds and makes the perfect interesting desk display. When assembled, I found the models to be reassuringly weighty. I just picked up this M1 Garand, Thompson submachine gun and gun rack. Perfect models for my desk in my man cave. Now you too can get your hands on a little bit of history for a fraction of the cost at goatguns.com. That's goatguns.com. Have a little fun. It's almost 11pm on the 8th of December 1971. Three warships of the Indian Navy are steaming northeast, cutting through the waters of the Arabian Sea at high speed. The Vidyard class missile boat INS Vinash is taking the lead, supported closely by the Whitby class frigates INS Trishul and INS Talwar. The Indian Navy is about to attempt the unthinkable, yet another daring attack on the Pakistani Navy's home base in the port of Karachi. Aboard Vinash are four stick surface-to-surface -surface missiles which are to finish the job started five days earlier during Operation Trident. However, this plan, codenamed Operation Python, is far more risky. The enemy is alert and is waiting for a chance at revenge. The Indo-Pakistan War of 1971 has started disastrously for Pakistan. The success of Operation Trident has embarrassed Pakistani military leadership and caused serious damage to its naval forces and the fuel supply in Karachi. Meanwhile, Indian ground forces have launched a full invasion of East Pakistan and are currently routing the Pakistani army, threatening to overrun around 100,000 men. Despite preemptive airstrikes by the Pakistani Air Force, India has been able to maintain battlefield supremacy due to its successes at sea. The aircraft carrier INS Vikrant has provided vital air support over East Pakistan, making PNS Ghazi's failure to sink the pride of India's navy even more consequential. However, the attack on Karachi has caused the most alarm within the Pakistani navy, which has significantly beefed up the defences around the critical port. The day after Operation Trident, Pakistani reconnaissance aircraft begin patrolling the waters outside Karachi both day and night. It is now extremely difficult to approach the port within 200 miles without being detected. The Indians learn just how paranoid their enemy has become when on the 6th of December a message from the Pakistani Navy is intercepted detailing how the Pakistani Air Force accidentally strafed one of their own warships near Karachi. Nonetheless, the vitally important oil tank farm near the harbour was only partially damaged in the first attack, and another one will be needed to further cripple India's enemy. Vice Admiral Ellen Jikal Kuravila decides to launch Operation Python the night of the 6th of December. However, stormy weather over the next two days makes the attack impossible and Kuravila postpones until the night of the 8th of December. With the benefit of Karma Seas, Operation Python begins at sunset. Whereas the Indian Navy attacked Karachi from the southeast during Operation Trident, the Vinash, Torwar, and Trishul are approaching the port from the southwest to confuse the enemy. Furthermore, Vice Admiral Kuravila has taken his flagship, the INS Mysore, on a diversionary mission to raid the Pakistani coastal region of Makran. It is hoped that this attack will distract his enemy and allow the Vinash to get close enough to Karachi to launch its missiles undetected. The Indian Air Force will also launch an airstrike on the Pakistani air bases in the area at the same time to maximise damage and chaos. While en route to the objective, the strike force detects radar emissions emanating from a Pakistani naval frequency. An enemy patrol boat is tracking the formation and relaying its position to Pakistani naval command. This threat must be neutralised before the Pakistanis can respond quickly. As the strike force nears the Manora Peninsula, INS Tolwar fires a surface-to-surface -surface missile at relatively short range. The small Pakistani patrol boat is hit and sunk while the strike force continues towards Karachi. Just before 11pm, INS Trishul's electronic surveillance unit reports that the central radar at Karachi has stopped rotating 
and is now pointed directly at the Indian warships. The Pakistanis know they are coming. With no time to waste, the Karachi strike group quickly closes the distance to the harbour. At 11pm, their radars detect a group of ships only 12 nautical miles away. After a quick deliberation with Indian Naval High Command, it is decided that INS Vinash will launch the attack as soon as possible even though the airstrike on Karachi hasn't arrived yet. Vinash launches the Styx missiles and the strike group retreats back out to sea. Although the Pakistan Navy has been alerted to the presence of enemy warships, Karachi has no anti-missile defences and anti-aircraft gunners are not at their posts. The first Styx races over the ships at anchor and smashes into the Kimari oil farm. The tank farm which had been hit four days earlier during Operation Trident once again goes up in flames, but this time the conflagration is far worse. Oil tanks explode one after another, and the massive plume of black smoke will block out sunlight in Karachi for three days. The second and third missiles home in on the group of ships just outside the harbour, which had been detected on radar. Although the Pakistan Navy has placed most of its remaining warships within the harbour to give them better protection, these are merchant ships with no means of defending themselves. The second Styx strikes the Panamanian vessel Gulf Star, which is carrying stores of fuel. Gulf Star explodes in a deafening roar and sinks within minutes. The third missile targets the British flagged cargo vessel Harmattan. The Styx strikes Harmattan and sets the merchant ship on fire. She will later sink after burning for hours. The last missile bears down on the Pakistan Navy tanker PNS Dhaka. Dhaka's crew have been able to activate their anti-aircraft stations and spot the incoming missile. She engages the Styx, but the Soviet-made missile is too fast to be brought down with conventional gunfire. Dhaka takes a direct hit on her port side, which ruptures the forward fuel tanks. Immediately, the call goes out to abandon ship, but 45 men, including the captain, stay behind to fight the flames. Their heroic actions will end up saving the ship, and she is later towed into Karachi. However, Dhaka is damaged beyond repair and she will be scrapped after the war. The night sky glows bright red as the tank farm and merchant ships continue to burn. It is at this time that the Indian Air Force finally arrives to take part in the attack. Hawker hunters dive in to bomb further fuel and ammunition depots around the port. The Pakistani air defences fire wildly into the night sky, hitting nothing. However, stray anti-aircraft rounds strike the Greek cargo ship Zoe, which catches fire. Despite attempts to save the ship, she will sink soon after. Two years earlier, in 1969, the Indian chief of the naval staff bragged to a newspaper that, If war comes again, I assure you that we shall carry it right into the enemy's biggest ports like Karachi, and you have my word, the Indian Navy will make the world's biggest bonfire of it. Needless to say, the Indian military has made good on this promise. Over 50% of all the fuel stocks in Karachi have been destroyed, along with billions of dollars worth of munitions kept in warehouses. Operation Python is a decisive victory for the Indians, and another devastating defeat for Pakistan. The following day, the 9th of December 1971, two Blackwood-class anti-submarine frigates of the Indian Navy, the INS Kukri and the INS Kirpan, are patrolling Indian territorial waters near the seaside town of Diu at 8pm. Their mission is to find and destroy a Pakistani Daphne-class submarine, which has been picked up by Indian Navy direction finders. Aboard INS Kukri, Captain Muller is in command of the anti-submarine task force and is having difficulty getting his ship's sonar to work properly. He must reduce his speed to just 12 knots to allow his sonar to sweep the ocean floor. However, this makes his warship an inviting target. Sure enough, the Pakistani submarine PNS Hangor is lying in wait for the two Indian frigates. A week earlier, Hangor allows the Indian fleet to sortie out of Bombay without a fight, and its crew is determined not to let this opportunity slip away. To regain control over the sea, Pakistan's navy has dispatched its entire submarine squadron to hunt and destroy enemy vessels. India retaliates with Operation Falcon, a massive anti-submarine effort to keep the sea lanes open. Having detected PNS Hangul, INS Kukri and INS Kirpan, 
continue to sweep the ocean floor with their sonar, while two Westland Sea King helicopters lift off from the Indian frigates to help in the search. Meanwhile, Hangul's commander, Tasneen Ahmed, orders his crew to work out a firing solution and prepares to attack the Indian warships. At 8.27pm, Hangor fires a torpedo at INS Kirpan. Kirpan's sonar picks up the incoming torpedo too late, and its captain orders futile evasive manoeuvres. However, the torpedo turns out to be defective, and passes right under Kirpan without exploding. The Pakistani submarine swings to the south to attack INS Kukri, which is still continuing west on a constant bearing. After 20 minutes, Hangor fires another torpedo, this time at Kukri. Although the ship is at action stations, the crew is relaxed and listening to a radio broadcast coming from Kukri's loudspeakers. At 8.49pm, the torpedo explodes directly underneath the keel of the ship, breaking its back. Multiple smaller explosions further ravage the vessel as munitions begin cooking off. Captain Muller orders abandon ship, but stays at the bridge to go down with the ship. INS Kukri sinks after only two minutes, taking 194 sailors with her. The Hangor once again attacks the Kirpan, which is steaming south to rescue survivors. Commander Ahmed fires another torpedo which forces Kirpan to reverse course and run to the north. Kirpan succeeds in outrunning the torpedo, and Ahmed orders Hangor to break off the engagement, content with the damage they have caused. The sinking of the Kukri proves to be the last major naval engagement of the Indo-Pakistan War of 1971. A week later, on the 16th of December, Eastern Command of the Pakistani military officially surrenders to Indian forces. East Pakistan is dissolved, and the newly independent nation of Bangladesh rises from its ashes. The war is a humiliating debacle for Pakistan, which has lost a third of its army, a quarter of its air force, and half of its navy. Thanks in part to operations Trident and Python, India has become the dominant power in the region. However, Pakistan begins plotting its revenge, which will bring the two nations into conflict once more in the future. <laughs>